In this video, we're going to learn how to add social auth to our Suabase and Svelkit application. By the end of this video, you'll be able to log in users to your app using GitHub, Discord, and Google. We'll also be covering how to handle social auth from both the server side and the client side. And if you haven't seen my previous video covering Suabase and Svelkit authentication, I'd highly suggest you check that out first, as we'll be starting out where we left off there in this video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so if you watched my previous video on Svelkit and Suabase authentication, this will look very familiar. We just have a very basic login form. We have the option to log in with email and password. And then I've added the GitHub, Discord, and Google buttons here underneath, which we are going to use to sign in with GitHub, sign in with Discord, and sign in with Google. So let's start off with GitHub for the time being. And the reason I chose these three is that I feel like these are some of the more popular options here, but really the process is very similar for any of the social auth providers that you'd like to use. So before we can do anything else, we really need to go into our Swoobase admin dashboard. We need to go to authentication. We need to come down to providers. This is where we're going to be able to enable the different providers that we want to use to authenticate users to our application. So we're going to start off with GitHub. So we'll just click here on GitHub and it's going to give us a redirect or a callback URL that we need to copy. So let's go ahead and copy this for the time being. And then we'll head into our GitHub account and we need to go to github.com slash settings slash developers. And we're going to go under the OAuth apps tab. And then we need to register a new application. We can name this whatever we want. We can say SvelteKit Superbase Demo. The homepage URL, this can be the URL to your actual application. In this case, we're just going to give it localhost 5173. And then the authorization callback URL, that's the one that Superbase provided us here inside of this redirect URL input. So then we just have to click register application. And now we have an application created successfully. So it's going to give us a client ID and client secrets. So we'll take this client ID here and we'll we'll paste this into the client ID field. And then we'll go back here. We'll generate a new client secret. And then obviously you want to make sure this is not shared with anybody. Copy this here and then paste that into the client secret box. Now we can click save. And now we have officially added GitHub as an option to log into our application. So let's go ahead and set up the code for that on the back end. So let's go into our VS code. And if you watched the previous video, you should be familiar, but if not, it's nothing, nothing too crazy is going on here. So currently inside of our server side action, our login action, we're just taking in the body from the request.form data. And then we're logging the user in using the Suabase SDK. And then on our actual page.svelte, we just have a form here for the actual email and password login. And then I've also created another form here with these different buttons within it. And we're gonna do a cool little trick here where we can send information to different endpoints about this form. And based on that information is how we're gonna actually authenticate the user. So this will make sense in just a second. So uh, the first thing I wanna do is add method equals post here to this. And then what we can do is we can come to each one of these buttons here and we can say form action equals and we'll say question mark slash login. So the same action that this form is submitting to, right, which is going to hit our login action here. And then we can pass an additional search param or query param into this action, which we're going to parse out on the server side. So let's just say login and provider equals Google or GitHub for this one. And then we can do the same thing for each of these other ones as well. and then just change the provider. So we'll say Discord and Google. Okay, so now on our page.server, what we can do is we can take in, in addition to requests and locals, we can take in URL, and then at the top, we can just say const provider equals url.searchparams.getprovider. And if you're using TypeScript, this is going to be of type provider. So we can say as provider, which comes from Suabase JS. And then we wanna to check to see is this actually even there? So is provider provided? If not, we just wanna run the regular login process. If there is a provider, we obviously wanna initiate the social auth login. So what we can do is we can say if provider, so if we didn't provide this at all, then this would be undefined, right? Then what we can say is we can say const and then destructured data and error as error equals await locals.sb.auth.signinwithoauth and then for provider, we'll just pass in the provider that we pulled out. And we can say if error, we want to return, or I'm sorry, if error, we want to return a fail of 400. And we'll just say message, something went wrong. And of course, we want to console log that error here on our server so we can see it. And then else, what we want to do is we want to throw a redirect to data.url. 
So let me just console log what data is first before I go about throwing this redirect so I can explain why we're doing it. I think it's important for you to know. So now if I come into my application here and I click on GitHub, and then we go into our BS code here, we'll see that data contains a provider and a URL. So this URL is where we wanna actually redirect our users to in order for them to initiate the login process with GitHub, okay? So by throwing this redirect here, we're essentially just taking care of that on the server side. We're also gonna implement this on the client side as well, but for the time being, this is how this is going to work. So we just throw a redirect with the URL that's provided. And if you noticed, up here, they also had provider equals GitHub, right? So this isn't something that we provided Suabase. This is Suabase's URL to log in with GitHub. We are just throwing that redirect from the server side so that the user is able to go there and sign up. So this will make sense in a second. So let's go over here and let's click on login with GitHub again. And now you'll see that we're asked permission to authorize FeltKit Suabase demo. If I authorize this, we will now be redirected back to our application and you can see that we are now logged in with our GitHub account. And this is the email address that I use for my GitHub account here, the test one. And then if we look at our Suabase authentication tab here, our users, we can see that we have Huntabyte test plus GitHub at gmail.com with the provider as GitHub. It says the created date and all that good jazz. So now we have officially created a user using GitHub as our provider. So now let's go ahead and add the ability to sign in with Discord. So let's go to our Discord. If we go to discord.com slash developers slash applications, make sure you're signed into your Discord account. I'm, I have a, a test account here set up for the purposes of this video. Uh, we wanna create a new application. We can give it a name. I can just call this Suabase Demo. It's gonna have some general information here. We don't have to fill anything else out on this page here, but we wanna go to OAuth2. And now we, you can see that we have a client ID and a client secret. So. Again, a very similar process. We go into our authentication tab in providers, we go to Discord, we enable it, and then we copy this redirect URL. We go back to our Discord portal here, and then we add a redirect. So we're gonna add a redirect to this, and then I'm also gonna add a redirect to localhost 5173. I'm gonna click Save Changes. I'm gonna copy this client ID and paste this in here, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna reset the secret, copy this, and then also paste that here as well, and click Save. All right, so now we've added Discord, so let's go back into VS Code and figure out how we can wire this up a bit better. So we know that we already have the front end stuff set up here as far as you know getting the right information back over to the server side, so we know which provider to use. Um, but what we wanna do now is really right now, if provider exists, then it's gonna try to run through this, right? But technically provider could be anything, right? I could pass whatever I wanted as provider. It doesn't mean that we necessarily have that provider, we support that provider. So what we can do here, and we can set up um, in a little constant array up here, and we can say OAuth providers, and we'll just say Google, Discord, and GitHub. And these are gonna be the options that are allowed when passing in providers. So what we can do is we can add a check here. So if there's a provider, if not OAuth providers.includes provider, then we want to return a fail of 400 and we'll pass in an error as we'll say provider not supported. This way, if a provider that we do not support is passed in, we can at least render something back to the user. You know, we can take advantage of this fail here and show some type of error message if we wanted to, letting them know that, hey, this provider is not supported. You must use one of the supported providers. So now the provider should be one of these here inside of this array. And we can remove this console log data here for the time being and the data URL is still gonna be there, so everything else is gonna work the same way. So really, once you have this set up properly, you really should only have to modify your OAuth providers array here to add the additional providers, and then obviously setting it up on your Suabase backend to accept those providers, adding the secret, adding the ID, and it's pretty easy to add as many providers as you would like. So now if we go back into our application, and we click on Discord to sign in now, when I'll get that Suabase demo once access to your Discord account, they can access our username, avatar, and banner, and our email address. So we can authorize this, and now we can see that we are now signed in with Discord. And if we go back to our users, we now have Huntabyte Test Plus Decord at gmail.com and the provider is Discord. So now let's go back to providers and we'll add our final one for this video, which is gonna be Google. So we'll copy this redirect URL here. And what you need to do is you need to go to the Google Cloud console. So console.cloud.google.com. And then what you wanna do is we want to type in OAuth here in the search bar. We can see that we have OAuth and consent screen 
we'll click on that and we need to create a project. So let's just create a project now and we'll call this Superbase test project. And it doesn't belong to an organization, that's okay. Okay, so that just takes just a second to start up the project. So now what we can do is we can click on external here for the user type and then click on create. We can provide our app name. The support email, I'm just gonna use the email that's associated with this Google account. You can of course upload a logo if you wanted to, I'm not going to. And then we can add a link to the homepage. Again, these are not required, but they are highly recommended. If you are, you know, obviously publishing this application, you want to include the privacy policy and the terms of service. And then we can also add an email address here. I'm just going to add huntbytetest at gmail.com for the developer contact. I'm going to hit save. As for scopes, this is where we can ask for permission to authorize specific things on that user's account. Really, we just want the email and the profile. So any of the first name, last name, profile picture, and their email address. So we can just click these two here and click update and then we will save and continue. Now we can add a test user here for the purposes of this application being in testing mode, right? So I can just add a test email that we're gonna be using. So we're gonna use test at gmail.com. And then we'll hit save and continue. It's gonna give us our summary. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to go do credentials here on the left. And we wanna create credentials. And what we wanna create is an OAuth client ID. So the application type is going to be a web app. And then we can just name this Superbase Svelkit Client. So under Authorized JavaScript Origins, this is where we're going to add in HTTP colon localhost 5173 or whatever the root is of your application, wherever it's running. And then we have the Authorized Redirect URIs. So we're going to add both localhost 5173 as well as our Superbase callback that we copied from the Google redirect URL field here. So it does take five minutes to a few hours for these settings to take effect. Normally it takes just a couple seconds for me, but it may take longer for you. So if it doesn't work right away, be sure to wait a few minutes to make sure. So we'll click on create. Now you can see that I get a client ID and a client secret. So I can copy these here and paste them into Superbase. Click save. Now we have successfully added Google as well. So now if we go back into our application, it may not work right away, but let's just try it out. Go to login, we go to Google. We can see that we now have the ability to sign in with Google. If we click on the test user here that I was, that I created, we're now logged in with Google. If we go back into Superbase here, go to users, we can see we have users from both email GitHub, Discord, and Google as the different providers. All right, so now we can go back to the client side and add some progressive enhancement to improve the way that this works, right? So we don't necessarily need to go to our server to log in a user with GitHub, Discord, or Google. If JavaScript is available in the browser, I would like to just go straight to Superbase and request a login rather than having to go to our server first, right? But now that we have the baseline covered, we know it's gonna work regardless. Let's add some progressive enhancement. So let's just say const sign in with provider. And we'll, this will be asynchronous and we'll take in a provider, which is gonna be of type provider, which we can import from Superbase again. And what we'll do is we will say const data and error. It's very, very similar to the backend, except we're gonna say Superbase client dot auth dot sign in with OAuth rather than the SB, right? Because this is the client, the JavaScript client that's running on our browser and the locals.sb is the server side client, okay? So now that we have this function defined here, what we can do is we can just set up a submit function. So we can say const submit social login and it's gonna be a type submit function. And we wanna take in a couple of things. We're gonna take in URL, or I'm sorry, we wanna take in action and cancel. And then we can set up a switch statement here. So we can say switch based on the action.searchparams.get provider. So the first case we'll do is gonna be Google. So we'll say case of Google. Then we want to await sign in with provider. And we will say Google. And this needs to be asynchronous here. Sorry about that. And then we'll break case of Discord. Await sign in with provider, Discord. 
break. And we have case of GitHub await oh, sign in with provider GitHub and then break. And then default will just break. So you could either do it like this, or you could just check to see if this is again, a part of the providers Define the providers here as well. And then just run, you know, passing provider here to this, but it's just another way that you can do the same thing. And then after this, what we want to do is we want to say cancel. So we don't want this to actually submit to our server, right? We're handling things on our client side. We don't need to interact with our server. So we're not going to actually make a form submission there. So we need to run cancel here and then we'll save. We'll come down to our second form here. We'll say use enhance that needs to be imported from app slash forms. And we'll say equals submit social login. So remember action has the URL is a URL object that will have the search params that we pass through. And we're looking for the provider, which is the same thing that we're doing here. Right. And then we're switching based on the value of that provider. So if it's Google, we're going to sign up with provider Google and so on and so forth. And then we're going to cancel. And of course you'd want to handle some type of errors here. I'm not going to go too far into that in this video. I've done a ton of videos on this already. Um, but let's just test this out. So let's go into our application. Let's log out. And then just to show you that we're not hitting our server, we can go here and we can console log hit login action and go into our application here and click on login. And then we'll just start out with the GitHub. So as soon as I click on it, you can see I'm logged in. We go to our server side code here and we open up our terminal. We can see that we did not hit this login action. So the same thing would work for any of them, right? So we can log out and log in with discord works just the same way. And then last but not least, we can log in with Google and you can see that we are now logged in. So that is how you add social auth to your super base and silk application. If you found value in this video, please don't forget to like, and subscribe. It greatly helps the channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to join the discord and ask them there or leave them in the comments down below. I appreciate you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.